to help us understand what's really going on in Tamil Nadu, because there's a lot going on. Joining me right now is Suman Siraman, who is a uh, senior political analyst uh, who's been writing a regular column in the Deccan, uh, Deccan Herald about politics in Tamil Nadu. And he's uh, personally a voice that I always go back to when I want to know what's going on in this state. Uh, Mr. Raman, it's a pleasure to see you after a while. Thank you so much for giving us Thank your you, time. Thank you, Good. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure, pleasure. Uh, first question, what I was talking about, right? Obviously, this state is now very important for the BJP. The BJP wants a foothold in South India. There's a lot being said about the fact that they don't have space in South India right now. Um, do you think all of the moves that they're making, Kachatibu, the prime minister visiting regularly, giving uh, interviews to uh, Tamil channels over Hindi channels, are all of these making a dent from where you're watching it? Um, yes and no. Now, let's look at uh, what the BJP's game plan is. The BJP, despite all the bravado that we see of 400 and char, uh, up ki bar, char so par and all that, there is a feeling that there may be unexpected losses in some states where they did well last time. For most, most exa notable examples are Maharashtra and Karnataka. We don't know whether that will happen, but there is a general perception that seats lost in these states may need to be made up and to some extent also in a state like Bihar um, and you know marginal losses in a few other uh, Hindi belt states though they may they are expected to sweep most of them like they did last time so the need is to make up these seats somewhere and where else can you make up these seats except in places like Tamil Nadu in Kerala in Andhra where the BJP has drawn a blank or done uh, you know very very poorly in the past so they got the strategy in place which they started with about um, almost two years ago where they wanted to increase their footprint in Tamil Nadu. Um, they appointed a new state party president, Mr. Anamalai, who is a former IPS officer. And, um, uh, you know, they they put in tremendous amount of effort, energy, resources. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the prime ministers, I think, made 11 visits or 12 visits to Tamil Nadu in the last one, in this last three months. So all of it indicates that the BJP is very keen to, um, you know, make a mark in Tamil Nadu, not just with a view on this Lok Sabha election. Look, the BJP never thinks of just the next election. They think of two elections, three elections ahead. So they are looking at increasing their vote share. They see an opportunity in Tamil Nadu because Jailalitha is no more. Uh, the AIA-DMK appears to be weak. And uh, there is an opportunity. Even the DMK faces anti-incumbency after three years in power. So they sense that there is an opportunity to change the uh, political landscape of Tamil Nadu by, you know, getting a foothold there. Now, the way they've gone about it, though, has not exactly been ideal. First of all, breaking the alliance with the AIDMK was a colossal mistake. Um, you know, and in hindsight, seeing the level of anti-incumbency on the ground when we go around to places uh, against the DMK government, if they had been in alliance with the AIA DMK, they could have won half the seats. That there's no doubt, perhaps even more than half the seats. And you know, always hindsight is 2020, so we can say anything now. But many of us did say that breaking the alliance with the AIA DMK was a mistake. The BJP says AIA DMK walked out, and you know, it is a uh, it's a very funny kind of a situation, Faye, where the AIA DMK didn't want to break the alliance. The BJP High Command did not want to break the alliance. That is why till about three weeks ago, the BJP High Command actually said our doors are open if the AIDMK wants to come back. So it is a funny situation where they put all their eggs in the basket of Mr. Annamalai, who systematically went about wrecking the alliance. So I think they've made a huge gamble. In my you know, opinion, and I could be proven wrong, but in my opinion, that's a massive mistake. So actually, I wanted to talk to you about Mr. Anamalai. So, you know, the Singham Corp, who has now turned politician, uh, the fact that the high command uh, of the BJP has put so much stock into a young, fairly new on the block politician and allowing him to sort of shoot from the hip the way he has. He's taken a non-Dravidian sort of stand as well, which is very different from the kind of politics we've seen in the state. There's, I've heard rumors in Delhi that he is... In, in the list of successors for prime minister sometime in the future. 
maybe number four, number five. I mean, this is the kind in Delhi. This is the kind of talk that's happening. Um, is he really making that much of a, of an impact on the ground? Is he the Taliban that we are reading about in the newspapers and the rest of the country? If if the polls were to be held on social media, uh, BJP <laughs> will sweep Tamil Nadu. Okay, and if it was to be held on say on X or platforms like that. Yeah. Mr. Anamalai will be the chief minister, will be the prime minister in uh, whenever Mr. Modi decides to hang up his boots. Unfortunately for the BJP, the reality on the ground is quite different because you have to understand the BJP was till not long ago a 3% vote share party in Tamil Nadu. This is not yes. like how the BJP is in say states like Bihar or Maharashtra where they are already a major player, if not the mm -hmm. biggest player, at least number two, number three, even 10 years ago. Here, the BJP is a 3% player. So now to take that 3%, and I think Mr. Anamalai has put in his heart and soul, no, no grudging the efforts that he has put in. But on the way, he has made certain um, extremely rash decisions. Um, and the, the, the most absurd of them was to, uh, you know, get rid of the AIDMK. And as we have seen now in the last few weeks with Mr. Yadapati Parnisamy campaigning hard and the crowd, in fact, uh, yeah. some of the reports say he has been drawing bigger crowds than any other leader, including Mr. Stalin in the uh, in the campaign or, or as big crowds as Mr. Stalin has been drawing. So I think that that was a mistake. That was a, a, a blunder of sorts. The point is maybe the BJP believes that if they can push the AIA DMK to third place in many constituencies, then potentially they could engineer a split in the AIA DMK before the 2026 assembly elections. Maybe that's the that's the game plan. And uh, they could be targeting, so the BJP's target in this election, and some of some of their leaders have been quite open about it, saying that their target is the second place. Mm. They are not looking at victory in many seats, though, of course, they will tell you that they're going to win six seats and eight seats and 12 seats and all that. But their target is to push the AIDMK into third place in as many seats as possible, so that post-election, there is a revolt against Mr. EPS, and a lot of people from the uh, AIA DMK could come and join the BJP. Will that happen? I don't think so because AIA DMK, remember, has been written off multiple times. The moment Jayalalitha died, they said in three months the government will fall and um, the DMK will come back to power and the AIA DMK will implode. Everybody will join the BJP. I remember this in 2017, January, February, March, where they said the government is going to fall. The government completed its full four year, four and a quarter year term in office after the demise of Ms. Jayalalitha. And until date, not a single senior leader from the AADMK has joined the BJP. So I think that, uh, you know, writing that party off was a little premature. And had they not taken a hasty decision to break ties, potentially they could have done very well. They could have compensated for losses of seats elsewhere. So uh, while talking about the AIDMK, you did say EPS is drawing uh, large crowds. OPS, on the other hand, is standing quietly near the podium while Mr. Modi speaks, uh, a sort of space that he's only recently been given because he was not given that space a little earlier also. Is there any hope for any revival for him or has he been now sort of written off as a single man with no party? He's not just a single man with no party. He's a single man with no supporters. See, the problem is even if you don't have a party, if you have a large cadre base, you can put together a party. Now, the man doesn't have support, not even among his own community. So, uh, I mean, whatever I hear is he could potentially end up second, but could may even end up third. But he's not winning Ramanathapuram, where he's contesting as an independent candidate. So, it's a, it's a sort of end of the road uh, as far as he's concerned. His son... Um, O.P. Ravindranath, yes. who was an MP in the um, outgoing uh, in the outgoing Lok Sabha, he has actually said that he wants to join actor Vijay's party. You know, when actor Vijay has already announced that he's coming to politics in 2026 and so on. So O.P.S. son is now saying, I will be very happy to support Vijay when he comes uh, and forms his party. So I don't think anyone takes him seriously. Look, from the AIDMK side, until even a year ago, they were willing to accommodate Mr. OPS as the number two in the party. But with virtually no support from any of the senior leaders, from the district secretaries, from the cadre, he wanted to be number one. So mm -hmm. that was the reason why 
you know people the aadmk finally sort of gave up on on uh, mr ops and that's why he is where he is now i mean he's uh, he's more bjp uh, he's a bigger bjp supporter than most of the bjp uh, leaders themselves you did bring up actor vijay and i was going to be my next question anyway because um, again we've seen a lot of this happen where there are uh, movie stars in in tamil nadu with very large uh, fan clubs and those fan clubs then sort of become turn into supporters and then they join politics do you believe that vijay has a fan club that's strong enough to turn into something substantial you recently wrote a column about it as well and is that going to help the bjp or is it going to you know hurt the bjp because it's difficult to tell which side this uh, this uh, you know new campaign is going to fly on vijay um you know has announced a political party a few months ago i think uh, it was in early february or something and after that he has not uttered a word there's hardly been anything i mean he given some greetings on some festivals and so on but he's not really taken a position on any political issue of the day so i think that it's going to be extremely difficult for i think those days are gone where where an actor could just come and his face itself would be enough to get a million votes that those days are history had rajinikanth um, not seen the writing on the wall he would have jumped in he knew very clearly that he you know did he, he should he have taken the plunge he would have ended up uh, you know where kamal hasan is today and uh, you know where kamal hasan is i mean for all practical purposes the party is over i mean he he has got some commitment from the from the dmk to get a, um, a rajya sabha seat for himself and uh, for all par- practical purposes yes. there's virtually nobody left in the party of any consequence so i think that this days of the big stars coming in and expecting uh, i think it's never actually happened in tamil nadu people don't realize mgr was in politics for 15 to 20 years before he became a chief minister it was he was a member of the dmk and then he set up his own party the aa dmk and uh, you know the party was set up in 73 1977 is when he became chief minister so this, this whole argument that you come to politics and then you become a chief minister i'm sorry jailalitha was in politics for 15 years before she became a chief minister so this whole argument is flawed the only man in india who i know was nt ramarao who formed a party and became chief minister in 8 to 10 months he is the exception nobody else has done this. also a lot of times movie stars discover that politics is not to their to their liking as a job because it tends to be uh, you know murky waters but movie stars are quite used to murky waters i mean there is a very strong uh, overlap between the murkiness of politics and the murkiness of uh, the movie industry so it's not that they're not uh, used to murky waters but i think that they aspire for great heights in a very very short period of time mm-hmm. it does not happen like that i mean yeah. it could happen if if for instance tomorrow vijay joins a, an established political party joins a dmk or an ai dmk and then contests an election on their behalf he could become an mp in in a year but you know it unless when you're starting off a political party it's a huge activity or the effort on the ground that is needed to build up a base in village after village mm-hmm. get booth agents i mean it's not a joke and it costs a hell of a lot of money politics today is expensive business and in tamil nadu it is colossally expensive i don't know whether you've been seeing the videos of the money distribution that's going on yes i mean stacks and stacks and stacks of notes here and there and uh, little nose rings uh, you know all kinds of little trinkets being given to the women and 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 cash distribution for all kinds of things i mean it is hugely colossally expensive so it's not easy for a movie star to make it any longer you know we talked about how uh, for the bjp breaking ties with the ai dmk would have been a mistake the dmk last year made statements about sanatan dharm which is still being regularly brought up by the bjp was that a blunder and that was that was that a gamble that did not pay off no 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 i i think see the dmk making these statements and they've been making them look the dmk has been saying the same thing on sanatan dharma only since i was in school right so a good 30 35 years or 40 years they've been saying the same thing so this was not something that udayanidhi stalin suddenly discovered and started speaking about a few months ago they've been saying the same thing the bjp felt that since they could utilize this opportunity to embarrass the congress so if you saw most of the media debates uh, and i participated in many of them where 
they would not say the dmk is saying this they are saying yes, the india yeah. alliance is saying this yeah, yeah. the india alliance is saying this uh, the congress must be agreeing see the congress ally is saying this so they're the, not the congress the is not rebutting yeah, yeah yeah the congress didn't rebut it strongly enough until until very recently so the point is that sanatan dharma issue is a non issue in tamil nadu kachatheevu is a complete non issue in tamil nadu um sengol is a non issue in tamil nadu the um kasi tamil sangam is a non issue in tamil nadu so the bjp i think has perhaps some of these are you know particularly the um, sanatan dharma issue did have its resonance in madhya pradesh and uh, you know rajasthan perhaps maybe because the prime minister spoke about it at multiple rallies yes. and he would have known you know uh, if if it's going to have resonance or not so that is a fact but in tamil nadu i think the strategic moves of the bjp to gain traction among the voters have spectacularly uh, been uninspiring and incorrect had i think two three things which the dmk um, chief minister goes around with he says when we had floods you did not give us one single paisa he keeps repeating it in meeting after meeting when the floods ravaged our state and that was not too long ago that was in the month of december last year hardly 4 5 months ago you did not give us one one paisa in fact he says uses the word paisa to emphasize that not one rupee was given from the center's own kitty it was only the sdrf fund due mm. to tamil nadu that was released then he goes on then his son carries the brick for the all india institute of medical sciences 2016 a foundation stone which the prime minister laid nothing has happened after nothing that happened. it still stands as it stood then there's a compound wall which has come up around the site mm. and only about 2 weeks ago because this became a big election issue they awarded a tender hastily to lasan and tubro and they said uh, work is started on aim so and many of the aims announced subsequently have been inaugurated so again these are issues see had the bjp brought big development projects to the state my gut feel is they could have doubled tripled their vote share but we haven't seen anything happening on the ground and i think that that's a huge problem for the bjp the issues of ram mandir abrogation of 370 uh, you know uniform civil code are these echoing and largely you know landing mostly in the north then in your opinion none of them are issues in tamil nadu fay whether it is article 370 whether it is ram mandir whether it is um, you know uniform civil code these are complete non issues in tamil nadu nobody even talks about them so tamil nadu but i don't know whether we want to say it it hums to a different um, rhythm or a beat or whatever but here the issue of development of anti hindi you know or or mm-hmm. basically allowing people to do their own thing you know without imposing things on them whether it is cultural imposition whether it is language imposition whatever so that is what finds resonance and importantly like i keep saying three or four big showpiece development projects in tamil nadu would have made a much bigger difference than what the bjp is attempting um, you know with all these rallies and and road shows and you know flower petals being thrown and all that it would have made a massive impact and they and they missed that trick they talk about the defense corridor do you know as of end of 22 beginning of 23 out of a total committed investment of around 12 or 14000 15000 crores only 3000 crore had materialized And 3000 crore is what one big industrial unit can put up in a factory so it's mm-hmm. not a it's not something which we can showcase and, and an industrialized state like tamil nadu has the dmk done enough you said there is some anti incumbency they've been in power for 3 years uh, is oh. there any sort of visible uh, you know change from that per se the the, the, D, the dmk has um huge anti incumbency i mean it is amazing how lucky they are they going to sweep this election but mm. let me tell you if they go on the same track they will be routed in 2026 there is no doubt about it they are winning this election purely because of arithmetic purely because they still have the bulk of the minority vote you have to understand the dmk gets 90% of the minority vote in tamil nadu minorities mm. constitute anywhere between 13 and 15% so out of the 40% vote that this huge alliance dmk congress cpi cpm vck mdmk you know and and, and so on and so the on nine, and so on yeah, i think yeah. 11 yeah 12 parties there about together they get about 40 45% last time they got 53% there's no way they're going to get that much now so they get around 40 45% 
despite that means that there is a shift away of close to 8 to 10 percent away from them in just three years you know i'm not taking 2019 but you know they, they were in the opposition then if you take 2021 the difference in vote share was just four percent so if they are going to have a nine percent swing away from them you can imagine what will happen to them in 2026 but luck is on their side the opposition vote is split so even if you get 38 40 percent you're still going to win because the uh, opposite side's votes would be split but in your opinion that luck will run out that luck will run out in the assembly election yeah. uh, uh, the, the anti-incumbency is huge there is no doubt about it but you see uh Faye, when you are starting off at 14 15 percent and the other side is starting off at zero there's a huge difference mm -hmm. so the dmk sustains itself in tamil nadu today without if they lose the minority vote tomorrow they will never be able to win an election i have been maintaining this for many years which is why eps also felt now that we've been sort of ejected from the bjp let's make a very aggressive push to recapture some of the minority vote it minority. may not work this time maybe by 26 it can work but the dmk in this election even if they win all 39 which is unlikely they may win about 34 35 whatever the alliance they are in trouble for 2026 as it stands now there's a lot being said, Mr. Ravan, about economics, inflation, the lack of jobs, uh, not enough seats. And we know very well, those of us who grew up in the South, the desperation between class eight and class 12 to be able to clear an entrance and secure a seat of some kind. Is that, you know, and, and the debate right now across the country is what are people going to vote about? Is it going to be inflation and the lack of jobs and the lack of opportunity? Uh, there is a great amount of infrastructural development the BJP has delivered. And then, of course, there is Mandir, there is CA, there is uh, UCC, there's all of these other things. From within Tamil Nadu, will the economics play a large role, in your opinion? The see, South being better off Tamil Nadu, than the rest of the country. Yeah. See, typically, Tamil Nadu does vote on economic issues it does not necessarily vote on uh, on the um, emotional issues of mandir and so on but this is pretty much a waveless election there is a lot of discontent mm -hmm. against the ruling state government but there is also a lot of discontent against the ruling central government so it's a sort of a, a double whammy that people are stuck with so they don't mm -hmm. like the state government but they're not uh, they don't like the central government either. The point really is that this election, thanks to Mr. Modi's, you know, frequent visits to Tamil Nadu, have now been virtually converted into, are you pro-BJP or are you anti-BJP? If you're anti-BJP, you will vote for the, um, uh, you know, for the DMK. That is where the AIDMK faces a, a disadvantage because the elections are slowly getting more and more polarized with, you know, are you pro-BJP, are you anti-BJP? And uh, even the anti-BJP um, people who may want, who may dislike the DMK government may end up casting their vote to keep the BJP out. Hmm. So, um, Veer Sangvi recently wrote, a, in fact, just today wrote an article about how one in four BJP candidates in this election nationally, and I'm asking nationally now, has switched over. And this is perhaps the f the first time in BJP's history that it's running on the power and the uh, ability of one man, one face. It, it was never that party. It's a different party now. But specifically in Tamil Nadu, they're happy to push a local leader. I want, I want your comment on the way the BJP has changed over the last, say, 20, 30 years. You've been watching it. Do you see this as modern politics for India? Because... In, if everywhere we see, whether it's Mamta Banerjee, Arvind Kejriwal, Stalin, uh, Mr. Modi, we're looking at individuals driving parties, not so much about collective cadre ideology anymore. But, um, Faye, I find the anomaly phenomena very, very surprising in a party like the BJP. Mm -hmm. Go back to uh, go back right from the rise of Modi. Tell me three state leaders that the Modi Shah combination has promoted aggressively. Yogi I can't think of it. At, at the most, no, no, I'll, I'll come to it. I'll come to it. They were, um, you know, 
Hemant Abiswa Sarma, you know, was actually yeah, a, a one of those cases, and maybe Yogi Adityanath, but all those ones earlier were slowly yeah. culled away. Shivraj mm-hmm. Chauhan, after having won the election, the ones, yeah, maybe Devendra Fadnavis to some extent, but now we don't know to what extent, uh, you mm-hmm. know, that will continue and so on. But Anamalai, the way he is being projected, look, he has contested one election in his life, an assembly election where he is lost, right? So the way he's built up as a future CM, future PM, and all that in the BJP's, um, you know, uh, propaganda machine, it's unbelievable. I mean, even Yogi Adityanath, I'm not too sure if the BJP's propaganda machine and their IT cell and all that would refer to him as a future prime minister. And I'm not even too sure that, you know, Mr. Modi and Mr. Amit Shah will appreciate something like that. So here you have the IT cell happily posting on social media, 2029, he will be prime minister, 2034, he will be prime minister. I mean, I mean, I'm amazed. So, and the point is, he hasn't been transformational. He's been transformational to the extent that he might have taken 3% to 13% or 12%, the vote share of the party. But it's not like he's transformed the party to where it's likely to capture power in 2026. Not at all. And there is a very strong uh, anti anomaly sentiment, both within the BJP and outside. So, uh, you know, within the BJP is probably stronger than even outside, because virtually all the senior leaders have been edged out and they, they don't really count anymore. And um, they feel slighted. But it's, it's very, uh, maybe somebody should do a study of this uh, at some point, mm-hmm. how uh, this man has got the confidence of Mr. Modi um, you know, to the extent that could it, uh, you know, he could it be, Mr. 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 I'm just thinking out loud. I'm just thinking out loud here. Um, the South has a lot of young people who are ambitious, who want to see themselves represented. They want to hear their own language being spoken. They, you know, we do know that this has always been an issue. Anywhere in the South, specifically states like Tamil Nadu, specifically states like Karnataka, where I'm from, when someone makes a speech in Hindi, there is a revulsion to it. We don't want to hear this. So by Picking a young person who speaks the language, who looks like one of us, and promising him a future, at least for the time being, are they breaking through that problem? That, you know, this is not just a North-based party that doesn't understand your issues, that's not on the ground, that's not one of you. No, the BJP for the last 10, 15 years has understood that, that they cannot, you know, pick people who are seen as Brahminical or who are seen as Hindi supporters and so on. So, Dr. Tamilisai Saundarajan, who's, you know, who's formerly governor yes. of Telangana and who's now contesting. Now, she's, she speaks the language. You know, uh, she, you know, has, has conducted herself extremely gracefully. And, you know, most public regard her as, you know, she's a nice person. In fact, the overwhelming sentiment this time is they feel sorry for her that she's been pushed into an un- unwinnable fight. But the point really is, then after that, there has been El Murugan. El Murugan speaks the language. El Murugan is one of us. El Murugan is, um, you know, also a son of the soil. So that way, the BJP has understood this earlier. So they have shifted away from the era of the H. Rajas and the uh, C.P. Radha Krishnans and so on. C.P. Radha Krishnan, now governor of Jharkhand. But the various, the, the BJP has understood this shift. The point really is that Mr. Anamalai has systematically gone about antagonizing everyone, being fairly abusive in his um, in his um, criticism and comments of virtually every senior leader, both among allies and among opponents. And, you know, if there was an award for, uh, uh, you know, how to lose friends and antagonize people, he would win it hands down. And I'm not, I'm amazed that the BJP high command, which is normally extremely perceptive, they are like four steps ahead of where we are. They haven't seen through this unless they know something that most of us at this point of time do not. But I feel that if they got themselves a different leader who is more accommodative, who's more inclusive, who's willing to take other political parties along and, you know, work with people rather than, you know, Mr. Anamalai's speeches generally go with I, me, and myself. And maybe, you know, as an afterthought, Modiji. So, you know, there's, there's, there's very little else about it. And politics, even, you know, unless you're a proven mass leader, you need yeah. to work with people. Be you know, you can't just say my way or the highway. So I, I think it's not going to uh, end. The election is not going to go well for the BJP in Tamil Nadu. And I think that Mr. Anamalai should shoulder a large portion of the of the responsibility 
they will increase their vote share there will be a double digit vote share they will get maybe because pmk is part of the alliance up to 14 15 16% maybe one seat outside there is a possibility but beyond that i don't see anything happening so too much singam not enough diplomacy uh, mr if i were to ask you to sort of I, i'm you know just sort of tell me what it looks like across the country to you right now most of the people we've yeah. spoken to have said it's a given the bjp will win this election it's just a question of by how much is that what you're reading as yeah. well look for over the last uh, month i've been you know interacting with at least about maybe about 200 to 300 people across different states many of them are journalists analysts and uh, you know across political spectrum what i have got to understand and this could be completely wrong is that it's going to be extremely difficult to stop the bjp in the hindi belt the hindi belt is pretty much given now when we say given do we mean it's exactly a repeat of 2019 or could they lose two seats here one seat here you know that is some feedback that i'm getting somebody said sir rajasthan they may not win all 25 they may win 23 you know but pretty much they're going to sweep up somebody said sir 75 nahi aayega they may get only about 70 68 mm. so those kind of things are there but where i feel that the bjp is likely to lose seats and you'll know this better than me are states like karnataka karnataka mm. the congress is looking good to win eight eight seats up to 10 seats so whether that will happen we'll have to wait and see second maharashtra where you will know better than me where almost everybody i speak to says that this may be a 50 50 verdict uh, uh, you know between the maha uti and the uh, mva so if that is the case that's a big loss so last time the nda won 41 out of 48 so then that could be about 15 seats down so first of all 400 no way 370 380 i don't see that happening now could they repeat what happened last time a lot uh, and another state where the congress is making gains is in telangana telangana they are expected to pick up you know last time they won three seats this time the general expectation is seven to eight seats so this chipping away of the bjp in different states um particularly in maharashtra karnataka and potentially in a few other places could mean that you know the 300 if they hit the 300 mark it would be a remarkable achievement i am not even sure that they will hit the 300 mark possibly a 250 at this point of time 250 to 275 they could achieve but uh, then again um, i i'm i'm completely flummoxed i've done the math about 200 times and i'm still not able to see where this 400 is coming from or 380 is coming from that the opinion polls are putting out you know the recent one poll put out 342 i think yesterday or day before i mean yes. everybody is a opinion pollster pollster now so you get numbers being put out morning afternoon evening but my gut feel is i think if they hit a majority they would have done very well so for telangana sorry to ask you this as well uh, k kavita being in jail now for this long and likely not going to be let out anytime soon is that going to hurt no i don't think so the brs is sort of imploding at a pretty rapid rate it will rebound for the state election but people are asking why should we vote for brs when we don't know what the brs is going to stand for is it with the bjp is it with the congress who is it with you know so i think that that's why you've seen a large number of their former mps themselves have defected many of their mlas have defected and what you see now is uh, the congress pushing very aggressively and for all practical purposes except about four or five seats in telangana it's more or less a straight fight between the bjp and the congress in telangana so mm. that means if the congress can carry on the momentum of the assembly election and get about 8 to 10 seats in telangana then that's a big plus for them mm. so the, whatever i heard is that the congress expects 40 to 45 seats in the south now whether that will happen we don't know but uh, that's the internal target that they've set for themselves between kerala um, tamil nadu Karnataka, Andhra, and uh, Telangana—the five states—they would like to win around 40 seats at the bare minimum. Okay, Mr. Ravan, thank you so much for spending time with me and answering all of these questions. It has been a pleasure to chat with you as always. I do hope we can talk again a few more times before we know the sure. final results. 
definitely nice nice thank you fair it's been good good Thanks. talking here yeah. thank you yeah bye bye bye